Hello everyone, 53 million years ago, the place you see was so hot that the coasts were filled with palm trees, and the temperature was above 20 degrees Celsius. Recently, the temperature here dropped to minus 89 degrees Celsius. Yes, we're talking about Antarctica. Antarctica is the fifth largest continent on Earth. 99% of the continent is covered by an average 3 kilometers thick ice sheet, and about 80% of the planet's freshwater reserves are found here. Here's a strange piece of information for you, if you haven't had your wisdom teeth extracted or your appendix removed, you're not allowed to enter this continent. So why is that? Let's explore this continent together. Antarctica's frozen terrain is one of the last frontiers on Earth that humanity has set foot on to explore. This white continent stands out not only for its extraordinary natural beauty and unique wildlife but also as a research paradise for scientists. However, every journey to Antarctica requires strict health and safety measures. Perhaps the most notable of these measures is the requirement for wisdom teeth extraction and appendix surgery. Obtaining medical assistance in the vast and inaccessible areas of Antarctica may not always be possible. The nearest fully equipped hospital could be thousands of kilometers away. In the event of impacted wisdom teeth or appendicitis, emergency surgery may be necessary, but the limited facilities for such interventions in Antarctica make prevention necessary. Although these rules may initially seem surprising, they are essential for safeguarding the health of scientists and ensuring the uninterrupted progress of significant research on the continent. Because scientists conducting research in Antarctica often serve in long-term missions. So what kind of research are these scientists conducting in Antarctica? Antarctica is a unique laboratory for understanding the effects of global climate change, unraveling the mysteries of marine life, and investigating traces of extraterrestrial life. Scientists here conduct studies on various subjects, from microbial life hidden beneath glaciers to atmospheric gas exchanges. While the surface of the Antarctic landmass has been well explored, as always, the most interesting things are hidden deep beneath. Therefore, it's crucial to learn what lies beneath these thick layers of ice. Have any significant discoveries been made under Antarctica to date? In the late 19th century, Russian scientist Peter Kropotkin was the first to suggest the existence of freshwater under the Antarctic glaciers. He argued that the immense pressure exerted by thousands of square meters of ice mass could reduce the melting threshold at the bottom of the glacier to the point where the ice would turn into liquid water. And accordingly, in the following years, research would prove this, and so it did. As of 2021, we are aware of approximately 400 of the lakes mentioned by Kofsky. However, one of these lakes is of great interest to scientists. This reservoir is approximately half a million years old and is therefore considered a true treasure trove of information about Earth and prehistoric life forms. Here is Lake Vostok. Based on satellite images examined in 1966, it was suggested that there could be a lake beneath the Russian Vostok station. However, this information was confirmed in 1996. When various data were combined, Lake Vostok was estimated to be 250 kilometers long and 50 kilometers wide, covering an area of 12,500 square kilometers. The depth of this lake is estimated to vary between 600 and 1200 meters, slightly less than Lake Baikal, the deepest lake, in terms of volume. Lake Vostok ranks fifth in the world in terms of volume on our planet, meaning we are talking about one of the five largest lakes on the planet here. In short, this lake is buried under a massive reservoir of 4,000 meters of ice, which is quite bizarre, isn't it? In terms of elevation, Lake Vostok is considered one of the lowest lakes on the planet, located 500 meters below sea level. Additionally, it is known that the water in the lake has been preserved for 15 to 25 million years and remained untouched during this process. In fact, this lake is so ancient that it emerged long before humanity. The average temperature at Lake Vostok is minus 3 degrees Celsius. You may wonder why the formation didn't freeze. The reason for this is the high pressure applied from above by the adjacent ice sheet and the heating of the lake bed by geothermal heat from the Earth's core. Lake Vostok is essentially filled with nitrogen and oxygen, contributing to a concentration of nitrogen and oxygen 50 times higher than ordinary freshwater lakes due to the immense continental ice mass creating approximately 350 atmospheres of pressure. 
to give. You a comparison, the pressure of car tires is only two atmospheres, so the lake's immense pressure poses a significant challenge to life. So what exactly is inside this lake? To find out, scientists began drilling a well in 1989. By 1998, researchers working at the Bostok station had dug one of the world's longest ice holes. With the joint efforts of Russia, France, and America, a hole 3,623 meters deep was drilled, and the analysis began in this way. Through studies, it was estimated that the age of the ice samples taken near the surface of the lake was 420,000 years. However, drilling was intentionally stopped about 100 meters above the estimated boundary between the ice sheet and the lake waters to prevent contamination of the lake due to the use of freon and drilling fluids that prevented freezing of the well. In November 2010, scientists presented the project's environmental assessment to the Antarctic Treaty Committee for Environmental Protection, thus initiating a new effort to continue the project and study the ancient waters. In 2011, drilling resumed, and in February 2012, Valery Lukin, the chairman of Russia's Antarctic Council, reported that there was only 50 meters left to reach the surface of Lake Vostok. Later, a thermal drill sensor detected liquid water, at which point scientists stopped drilling. The removal of the drill reduced the pressure below, causing the water to be drawn into the hole. Researchers then allowed the lake waters to freeze, and a few months later, they collected samples from the newly formed ice and sent them to a laboratory. So, what conclusion did they reach? In 1998, a team led by Scott Rogers from Bowling Green University in Ohio discovered 3,507 unique gene sequences in ice samples taken from about 170 meters above the surface of the lake. However, this finding was questioned by the scientific community. Microbiologist Sergey Bulat from the St. Petersburg Nuclear Physics Institute believed it was contamination, nothing else, as his own group had previously examined the same set of samples. On the other hand, ancient DNA expert Willersleff also criticized this finding. Willersleff found it doubtful that cultures isolated for millions of years could have the same microbial sequences as those found outside the lake. He noted the possibility that some of the obtained sequences could be a result of contamination. Nonetheless, there are also data that have been conclusively verified. Such a discovery was made in 2004 with the finding of an extra M film at a depth of 3,607 meters. The organisms found use inorganic materials as an energy source, enabling them to survive in extreme conditions. However, remember that they were found under 3,607 meters of ice. To put this into perspective, this depth is equivalent to the height of the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa, times 4. Furthermore, these organisms can comfortably live at temperatures around minus 50 degrees Celsius. Of course, they probably initially lived in the warm reservoirs at the bottom of the lake. But there's more. In 2014, Sergey Bulat announced the discovery of a previously unknown bacterium named W231. The bacterium was discovered during the analysis of water from Lake Vostok. In fact, Sergey wrote about this in a scientific article and published it in the PubMed journal. The most interesting thing about the subject is that genetically, the bacterium only resembles modern organisms known to science by 18%. This is a relatively low percentage and indicates that the bacterium has evolved separately from Earth for millions of years. So perhaps W123 could prove that we are not alone in the universe. Lake Vostok may have had an isolated environment with ice for millions of years. Additionally, formations like Jupiter's moon Europa and Saturn's moon Enceladus could have similar conditions with ice-covered oceans. So we might find a similar life form on these celestial bodies as well. On the other hand, although the size and mysteries of Lake Vostok are fascinating, it might be better to examine more accessible bodies of water for new discoveries. Therefore, scientists decided to focus on Lake Venns. Unlike other lakes we know, Lake Venns is not similar to typical lakes. The weight of the ice causes the water under the glacier to rise, leading the lake to sit on the edge of a hill. This thin layer of water, about 2 meters deep and covering an area of approximately 60 square kilometers, remains under the low pressure created by the ice sheet. On January 27, 2013, scientists passed through this ice cover and reached the lake water. 
They then entered the well under high pressure and filled the lower part to about 30 meters. The next day, the first samples were taken from the lake, and a camera was sent into the depths of the lake to take photographs. The research revealed that many different species of bacteria live there. Since the lake is located about 800 meters below the surface of the ice, it is completely devoid of sunlight. Therefore, the microorganisms living there produce energy through chemical reactions with inorganic compounds. Chemotrophic bacteria, such as those found in Lake Venz, use the reduction of iron, sulfur, and nitrogen compounds to produce energy. Yes, just like plants and algae on the surface of the Earth produce food using solar energy. On the other hand, this study was the first successful extraction of such high-quality samples from an Antarctic subglacial lake. In 2019, researchers began the drilling project for another subglacial reservoir called Lake Mercer, located 600 kilometers away from the South Pole. As part of the project, a 1,067-meter-long core drill was opened to collect samples from Lake Mercer, a subglacial lake. Yes, the lake was exactly at this depth. The researchers collected some samples from the bottom of the reservoir, then took these samples to the laboratory and when they looked through the microscope, they discovered some elongated structures resembling fungi or plant parts. Additionally, scientists also found remnants of tardigrades and crustaceans exoskeletons, which was quite surprising. Because no one had thought that a more complex life form than single-celled organisms could live here, unlike other analyses that seemed suspicious, the tardigrade and fungal fragment samples discovered here literally shocked the scientists. However, whether such organisms can live in these environments has not yet been determined. Perhaps due to factors such as the movement of the ice, these organisms found themselves in this environment at some point, but we don't know that for sure yet. Still, the most important point here is this, if these organisms can live here, we may face a much larger reality under the Antarctic ice than we thought. In fact, the theoretical debate about the possibility of multicellular organisms living in subglacial lakes is a matter of great curiosity for the scientific community. These lakes may be a reflection of the ancient climate conditions dominant on Earth millions of years ago and may harbor organisms from those periods. So theoretically, we can say that these organisms may have evolved to adapt to extreme cold and high pressures. For example, Fish and other marine organisms that produce antifreeze proteins can prevent their cells from freezing even in freezing temperatures. Multicellular organisms living under glaciers may have developed similar mechanisms. Moreover, organisms living in these environments may have adapted to conditions where oxygen is limited or completely different chemical compounds dominate, metabolizing chemical substances instead of photosynthesis to produce energy. The existence of microbial, viral, and bacterial species not previously discovered by humanity raises the question of whether they could pose a potential threat to human health. This concern arises primarily from the fact that microbial life forms from these extreme environments may be completely alien to the human immune system and thus have the potential to cause unexpected diseases. The isolation of life forms in subglacial lakes for thousands, perhaps millions, of years suggests that the genetic structure and pathogenic properties of these organisms could be significantly different from those of present-day microorganisms. This could create new and unforeseen health risks for the human population. Historical pandemics like the Spanish flu in 1918 and the coronavirus pandemic have shown that diseases caused by virus types that humans have not previously been exposed to can spread rapidly and cause significant loss of life. Yes. Thanks to scientific discoveries and technological advancements in Antarctica, access to these microbial life forms, which were previously inaccessible, is becoming possible. However, when this happens uncontrollably, it can expose humanity to viruses and bacteria that have never been encountered before and may be unmanageable. The release of these pathogens could pose a major challenge to global health systems. Because modern medicine is still limited in dealing with unknown pathogens, when we consider the potential for great danger, such research must be carried out meticulously within the framework of ethical and safety standards. What do you think about this? Do you think there could be life on such an unimaginable scale under the Antarctic ice? We await your comments. Goodbye.